What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Python tips and tricks tutorial series. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to swap the values of two variables in Python in different ways. And before you think that you already know how to do that and that you already know the trick that I'm going to tell you, uh, I don't think that's true. So stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm going to show you uh, a method that you've probably not seen before. So let's get right into it. So the task is very simple. We have a equals 10 and b equals 20. And what we want to do now is we want to swap their values. So we have uh, two variables, two values, and we want to just swap these values. You want to end up with a equals 20 and b equals 10. Um, now, why is this actually a problem? Why do we need to talk about this? Because in most languages, it's not as straightforward as it is in Python. So uh, think about it. You cannot just go ahead and say a equals b and then b equals a, because what would happen then is you would have a equals 20. Uh, and then you would say b equals a, but a is already 20. So a is the value that b has, and you would end up with both variables being 20. Uh, which is why usually what you do is you say temp a temporary variable that you use as a placeholder, you say temp equals the current value of a. Now we can change a to b. And then we can go ahead and say b equals temp, which was the former value of a. And by doing that, you would end up with the swap values. So you would have, uh, sorry, you would have a equals 20 and b equals 10. So this is the the way that you would do it in most programming languages. In Python, this works uh, a little bit simpler. You just have to type a b equals b a. So uh, this alone is enough to swap the values. So you say print a print b, and you will see that we have 20 10 again. We swap the values just by doing that. Uh, this is because in Python we can just uh, state the variables on the left. And then uh, the desired order in the right. This not only works with two variables, this works with 100 variables as well, which is very convenient because we would need a lot of placeholders, uh, or we would need a lot of uh, effort to to do that otherwise. So let's say c equals 30, d equals 40, and uh, e equals 50. We can now just go ahead and say we can actually print a b c d e before the swapping, and then we can say, for example, uh, a B, C, D, E equals, and then the new, uh, the new constellation shall be something like D, E, uh, C, A, B or something. Then we can print that A, B, C, D, E. And by doing that, we end up with a new constellation here. So we swap the digits, uh, the, 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 not the digits, the uh, integers in the way that we wanted to swap them. Now, I guess most of you guys were probably already familiar with this uh, way of swapping variables. And now I'm going to show you a little bit more fancy way that's a little bit more technical. But I think it's very exciting, especially if you're interested in uh, theoretical computer science and binary digits, because we're going to use an XOR operation to swap the digits without using a third variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we have a number A, uh, a variable A, and a variable B. And what we now want to do is we want to use bitwise operations in order to end up with swap values. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to use some comments here, some multi line comments to explain to you what uh, how numbers are represented in binary digits, I'm not going to explain it in detail here, you should know this is also not something you need to know, it's just a fancy way of swapping digits, you'll probably not use it. Um, but it's interesting if you're interested in computer science. So every number has a binary representation, which means that it can be represented by ones and zeros. This is because every number is um, in, in a certain uh, number system uh, has positional values. So when we have the number 105, for example, we have five times one, zero times 10, and one times 100. That's because we're in the decimal system. When we have the binary number 11001, for example, this means we have one times one, zero times two, zero times four, one times eight, uh, and one times 16. So in total, we would end up with uh, 16 plus eight, which is 24, this is 25 then, because we have plus one at the end uh, in a decimal, in the decimal system. So every number can be represented in zeros and ones. And this means that we can apply bitwise operations onto them. So let's say we have the number 24, for example, uh, it would be represented as uh, one, one, zero, zero, uh, zero, because it's 16 and 18. 
And then let's say we have another number which is 41, for example, and this number is 101001. This is because it has one, uh, it has zero times the two, zero times the four, it has eight, which is nine, then we don't have 16, but we have 32. 32 plus nine is 41. Uh, by the way, the numbers are not just arbitrary, they're powers of two. So we have uh, two to the power of, sorry, two to the power of zero is one, two to the power of one is two, two to the power of two is four, then we have eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Uh, that's how the binary system basically works. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm just adding a zero in the front of here. Uh, and what we can now do is we can do bitwise operations. And one of the bitwise operations that we can do is the so-called XOR. And XOR, for those of you who don't know, is an operation that returns either zero or one, depending on the inputs. And if you have zero, X or zero, this means that you will end up with zero. If you have one X or one, it means you also end up with zero. Why? Because XOR means exclusive OR. It means that it only fires one if the inputs are different. So if you enter one X or zero, you'll get a one. If you enter, uh, enter zero X or one, you'll also get a one. If you enter one X or one, or zero X or zero, you get zero because they're not different. Um, and if we apply the XOR operations onto those two numbers here, what we end up is uh, with is uh, one X or zero, or actually let's, let's do it uh, starting at the beginning here. We have zero X or one, which is obviously one. Then we have one X or zero is one, one X or one is zero, zero X or zero is zero, then again zero and then one. So this is uh, something we end up with here. We don't care about what number this is, but this is our mask. And the interesting thing is that now if I apply the XOR operation here again, so if I go ahead and do uh, this mask here, XOR 41 again, what we get is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, which is actually 24 again. So uh, we can reverse this process, which means that I can just go ahead and store the mask in one digit and then recreate the other digit. Uh, actually not digit, number, sorry. So what we can do here straightforward is we can say A, X or B, which is uh, in Python this operator here, so A, X or B is that. Um, and I can say A equals A, X or B. So I just store the result here. Actually, maybe let's go and use the numbers here. So 24 and 41. Um, and this means actually that I'm doing exactly that which I did here. So I'm having here A and here I have B. And what I do here is I get the mask and save it into A. Now the only thing I have, th this value is already lost. We didn't save it anywhere. The only thing I have is the mask stored in A right now. So it's no longer this value here. It's stored in A and then we have B, which is still the number that it was before. Now what I do is I say B equals the uh, B equals uh, B X or A, which is the mask. So we take B and X or it with the mask. So essentially what is stored in A. We take this number here and X or it with the mask. And we already saw that what we get as a result is 24 here. Then what we do again is we take A and X or it with B. So let's just update this real quick. What we have now is we have this value here in B. We still have the mask in A. Uh, we don't have this number stored anywhere, but in the same way that it reproduced this number, the mask X or with this number here will reproduce this number. So I will just say A X or B. And what I end up with here is exactly that number here. And that's it. We swap the values. So we can go ahead and print them A B and you will see that the numbers are swapped. So that is how you swap two numbers using an XOR operation. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I think this method of swapping digits using a bitwise operation is very exciting and interesting. Of course, it's not the most practical. You'll probably just use AB equals BA, but it's very interesting, especially from a, uh, from a theoretical computer science perspective. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comment section if you like it or not. Uh, also, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.